Welcome to Crema Media's Polity. I'm Brad Doubleman. I'm at the Helen Sussman Foundation in Parktown to meet with political analyst Aubrey Machiki to discuss the influence of China on democracy. Aubrey, please explain what you perceive to be the irony when the West warns Africans on the threat that China poses to democracy. Well, the usual argument is that uh, we should be careful of uh, China because China is a hegemon, or some people might say a hegemon. Um, my response to that is that that may be the case, but uh, Africa has not experienced China as a hegemon. What we have experienced as hegemons are Europe and America. But it doesn't take away, of course, from the fact that we should be uh, careful in our relationships with either China or the West, and uh, in being careful, make sure that we engage in relations with those countries and uh, continents in our interests. You recognize a gap between China's economic resurgence and its democratic deficits. Are the two really that diametrically opposed? Well, as you know, there are three schools of thought as far as uh, the link between democracy and development is concerned. There are those who believe there can be no development without uh, democracy. Um, others argue that uh, you can have development without democracy. And there is a third school of thought according to which democracy is neither sufficient nor necessary for democracy. Now what people tend to do um, in support of the argument that you can have development without democracy is to invoke countries like China as an example. But as South Africa, we've already made the choice. As a constitutional democracy, we've made the choice that we're going to marry democracy to development. Now, China, of course, is a country um, that is uh, becoming more and more dominant in the global economy. But that dominance has not coincided with the country adopting a democratic uh, culture or ethos. So there are concerns that uh, the dominance of China in economic terms might have an influence of, on, on global democracy. In other words, there are concerns that as democratic countries in the developing part of the world engage in economic and other relations with China, they might lose their appetite for democracy. I'm not persuaded um, that is the case. I do believe that uh, countries such as South Africa can engage with countries like China and other countries that uh, are not democratic in terms of economic relations without abandoning uh, their commitment to democracy. How great is the difference between Western and Eastern influences on Africa? Could China not just be construed as being a neo-colonialist? Well, there is always the possibility that as Africa and um, other developing parts of the world build relations with uh, a resurgent China, uh, they might lose themselves uh, with China becoming dominant over them, not only in economic terms, but also uh, in terms of uh, their democratic um, ethos, but also in cultural and other terms. And, and that is why, of course, um, the option, of course, is that not of delinking. Um, the option is that of engaging with countries such as China while remaining uh, committed to your democratic ethos. But what we must bear in mind is the fact that in our relations with the West, um, we have experienced a history of colonialism and there is no guarantee that that history of uh, colonialism um, cannot be visited upon us by another hegemon in the context of um, changing um, global dynamics going forward. Uh, but I think um, continents such as Africa have had enough experience over time uh, to be quite vigilant about the possibility of going through a neo-colonial um, experience. Um, 
while a neo-colonial experience might not happen in political terms, I think the greatest danger is that the neo-colonial um, experience might occur in economic terms. And that is why in our attempts at exploiting the shifts that are beginning to happen in the global system, we must make sure that we end up with either a more ethical or a less unethical global order. You mentioned that China's influence is not the only threat to substantive democracy in Africa. What other threats do you perceive? Well, I am quite concerned with what I see in Europe um, with the election of uh, technocrats in countries such as Greece and um, Italy in response to the Eurozone crisis. Because there is always the danger that in response to an economic crisis, we might subvert the, the need to ensure that whatever government emerges to, to respond effectively to any economic crisis, such a government must emerge as a result of the will of the majority of citizens. It therefore worries me that uh, the precedent that we might be setting in countries such as Italy and Greece is that of responding to economic crises in a manner that subverts the will of the majority of citizens. In other words, despite an economic crisis, citizens must still have the right to decide who will govern them and who will lead them. In other words, the response to an economic crisis must not be delinked from the democratic imperative. Thank you, Aubrey. You're welcome.